going on our YouTube? I'm out in the shop today, just kind of messing around, did a little work on the Westmade Peterbilt Rat Rod. Um, I posted some stuff on Instagram. This body's from Nightcrawlers 3D. I was using it to experiment with and some different weathering techniques. Um, honestly, I can't even remember what all I've done to it. It was painted oh, turquoise at one point, then it was painted green and red and then it had the weathering the rust streaks and then I used uh, weathering powders and a pigment binder on top of that a different color pigments and I, I love how it came out it looks looks pretty good and I did a lot of body work on it and uh, got almost all the print grain out it is 3d printed um, these are available through Nightcrawlers 3d if you're interested um, I'll try to put a link in the video description um, the thing with this body, I, I'm thinking about doing a build with it. I posted some stuff on Instagram and I have mocked up with some dually wheels. And um, I think it may be the next rat rod build for me. But these bodies don't have any kind of firewall. Um, the M Designs bodies, like I used on the RC4 drive giveaway, it has a firewall built in. And that makes, it's good and bad. Getting it to clearance or cut around the transmission whatever type of uh, setup I'm using. It, uh, it's a little work trying to get it to, to match right and look good. Um, like the number two build, I used metal. That was the awesome designs cab. And uh, if you haven't checked into that, go to Facebook and look at awesome designs. And uh, he gives out the files as well if you want to try printing it yourself. Uh, Nightcrawler 3D does not, he sells the prints only. So uh, anyway, we need a firewall for this. I don't know, I, I was laying in bed the other night and it just kind of dawned on me what I need to do to make one. Um, the thing with the Awesome Designs cab, there are places here where you can put magnets and then you just cut one out of metal and boom, it's on. So this body, we're gonna have to make one that kind of fits and has tabs inside that we can either glue or make some way for it to attach inside of the cowl where it's seamless on the outside, but that gives you the option as well where you can recess the firewall in a little bit if you need a little more space in the engine compartment. So uh, I've got this piece of copper colored sheet metal. It's kind of thin. I'm thinking about using that. I typically use, uh, I think, a 16 gauge steel and I grind off the zinc finish on it so it starts rusting and I'll put it in the sink with some vinegar and peroxide and, and make it have a cool look. But uh, I thought I'd try this with copper. Um, this should be, if once we reinforce the edges, this piece I, I had cut and folded for a, something that didn't happen, so <laughs> I'm trying to <coughs> save, save some material here. So I'm gonna go through the process here, I'm thinking, to uh, make this work. So first step, I've got this edge, it's pretty flat, and we're gonna make that the bottom. And I'm gonna mark it on the inside, the outline of the cowl. Alright, so now we have our basic shape. Now we need to, before we trim this, we need to make some spots where it can mount to the body. So I'm just going to make some rectangular tabs off the side, make them about half an inch. And they don't have to be perfect. I'm just going to do, yeah, I'm just going to do, and I'll do two up top. So I don't want to make it too difficult to cut because this is metal and Tin snips are not the most accurate or precise thing. So something like that. We're going to cut this out and then we're going to fold these in. And that will give us a place to glue it on the inside of the body. Um, now, if I had an engine and I knew what I was going to use right now, now would be an excellent time to go ahead and cut out the transmission tunnel if it's going to have one. Um, these builds kind of go two ways. If I use a, a, like an RC4 drive V8 or the Nightcrawler's 3D printed flathead, something I can actually put a motor in, then I'll use it R4 transmission, and then we will have to clearance it, but something like the diesel engine there on the number two, it doesn't hold, house a electric motor, so we have to put a transmission and everything in the cab, so there's really no need to cut the firewall out. But uh, yeah, we get the snips and we'll cut this out. Now since I 
mark this with a big old fat sharpie on the inside of the body. We're going to want to cut outside of our mark. I don't want it to uh, take too much off and then it not look right. So we'll leave a little bit of space outside of our paint or sharpie line. And we can come back and trim it off as needed. Um, the problem with this is super thin, so it may bend very easily. It may cause us problems. The other metal I use is typically thicker. Now our tabs for the mount, they don't have to be perfectly shaped in any way, shape, or form. Because they're not going to be seen at all. Tin snips, the problem is they're just so thick. We'll have to just start cutting like that. I may just go all the way across. And then we can cut down. And we could leave all that on top. We would just need to, this is a radius, it is curved. We would have to kind of pie cut it to relieve it as you fold it over in sections. Uh, but really we don't need that much to mount. Four spots would be plenty. Two up top, two on the sides. I think that would be more than enough. I'll go ahead and make that one a little bigger. And we can come back and do this corner. All right, so we'll start with this. All right, so now we can kind of hold it up here and see what we have. We've got a little bit too much excess. I need to cut it closer to the Sharpie mark, which is no big deal. We'll just take it right along the edge of it. And let's snip that off. And all these little scraps, be sure to gather them up because this stuff is not fun when it's all over your floor and you're stepping on it. I've done that for many a years. I'll leave my metal scraps laying around, they'll get knocked off, and the next thing you know, I've got a piece of steel on my foot. It's awesome. Alright. Come on. All right, so the top's gonna be a little trickier because cutting in here is, is a pain. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold our tabs in. We're gonna eyeball it. So we've got some uh, issues up top already with that corner. This is all looking good though. So I'm gonna put this in the vise and fold it over. I picked up these two of these little vintage vise desktop mounted ones. They're extremely handy for stuff like this. I'm just going to clamp this in here and try to get it even. We want a good 45 on it. Looks pretty good. Um, where is my hammer? I like to just give it a couple whacks with the hammer. Try to help it stay nice and flush, cleaned up some of the unevenness in it. <clears throat> Gives us a nice clean edge. And same thing on the other side. I'm sure there's a more professional way to do this, but this is how I like to do stuff. I like to do it by hand. All right, so we got our nice clean edges down there. We'll put it up there. Fits in the body nice and snug. So now we got to work on our top edge, which is awful high. And it'll stay put. So that fits perfect actually on the bottom. So we got to do some trimming up here. Our top edge is, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. I don't know how we got so far off on that, but it's the magic of using gigantic Sharpie for this kind of stuff. 
going to come along about there, somewhere in there. All right. So now, now the tricky part begins. We've got to do the trimming and keep the corners nice and rounded. This side had a big gap. Yeah, I gotta grab these little pieces and throw them away immediately. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to bring this one down. Guess that already looks good. Now this is this is gonna be a problem. may have to go ahead and fold this back. So by going ahead and folding this, it's going to give us better access to cut in between them, hopefully. Where is the hammer? So now we have that other section exposed here. We can just get it to get enough bite on it. Alright, well, let's see how it fits. Alright, so it's still going to need a little fine tuning, but I'm going to put it, use my uh, bench sander to fix the top edge. If I can get this thing back in here. So you can see where our folds are and where the other part is. It lines up pretty good. Just need to smooth it out, even out the, the areas here. Get rid of the bumps from the cutter. So I'm gonna get the bench sander and we'll smooth it out. So you can see it fits pretty well. There's a little bit of a gap, but it's obvious that's not original to the truck. It's not like a, a factory firewall that would protrude from the cowl. So uh, I'm happy with it. Not sure yet how I want to finish the copper, if that's even copper. I'm not sure how my my rust solution would act on that because it's, it is just a copper tinted steel. So I don't know what that would do. We may have to do some experimenting. We gotta do something to it though, because uh, you know, it's got smudges and sharpie marks and stuff all over it, so. But this will allow us also, if we need to, we can push this back a little bit and make a little more room in the engine compartment. So uh, probably what I would do, I've got some of these plastic epoxy, these two-part type glues, and uh, I would use that to mount it. Just put it around those four tabs, clamp it like this, and uh, let it cure. That stuff usually works really well with the uh, 3D printed plastics. So, uh, anyways, just a little quick how-to video. Thought it might be uh, interesting to some of you guys. But, uh, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned for more on this build in the future. I know I've got a lot of builds going, so this one's probably on the back burner since it really doesn't have much going on. But, uh, yeah, be sure to follow along on Instagram, RC Every Day. Keep it scale. I'll see you all in the next video.